y'all, let me show you what me and my buddy, Miss Hilda, found. <laughs> Miss Hilda found it. Sherry couldn't find it. See this? For a long time, you know, I've been supporting this man. And now, <laughs> I'm supporting him even more than ever because he chose the VP I would want. Hilda, I'm so excited. I am too. He's going to so do a excited. great job. <laughs> I, and y'all are going to think I'm awful because I'm a woman who's been in business for over 30 years, self-employed. I don't want a female to be vice president or president. I'm sorry. If you're a female and you were applying for the presidency job or the vice president, I'm sorry. I can't vote for you. I like authoritative men who respect women. Absolutely. And we saw that in the last Trump administration. He had so many amazing women on his staff. It was crazy. From Kellyanne Conway, who's a, an amazing attorney, so many amazing women. He, I love having the female staff, but I want the world to look at the United States with a very strong man. Well, there's nothing any stronger than the United States Marine. Right. And J.D. Vance is a United States Marine. So yes. did I get my wishes? <laughs> I did indeed. He I picked a good indeed. one. Mm -hmm. And Miss Hilda, I'm so glad you found my sign because I couldn't find it. <laughs> and I was all stressed. And you just reached over there and just picked it up, popped it out. And this sign has rode a lot of miles with me. <laughs> it's been to a lot of places going, <laughs> Trump, Trump, Trump. So exciting. You know, we haven't been here since our president almost lost his life. And, you know, Hilda, we think about that. Do you know how close we came? Oh, my goodness. It was how very, close very close. Was, yeah. Yes. He said he should should not even be here the other night when he was right. speaking, you know. Right. It was, the God, God was taking care of him. Absolutely. And, you know, um, he got criticized for saying that God took care of him. One of those, we're not going to say her name because I can't stand her. And I'm being nice today <laughs> or I'd say her name. But one of those people on another station said, oh, he's, he's using Christianity. Oh, no, if you don't cry out to God when you've got a bullet flying past your ear, <laughs> something wrong with you. So I think that God has protected him. Absolutely. I think that God have has no protected doubt. America because we are getting our wishes. We are praying for a to better, come back to... A better America. Yes. A better America. And, you know... I, this is weird because on Saturday I was having a conversation with somebody from New York who's very, very concerned about um, she crime, crime. And her husband said, well, she can't get New York out of her mind because it is so full of crime. And I said, well, you know, we just don't see that in North Georgia. But if we don't watch our step, we will we see will it in see North it. Georgia. Yes, Because absolutely. these open borders, people are going everywhere. And we saw it happen in Athens, Georgia. We saw it happen in Texas. We've seen so many things happen in small town America that we did not see before. Well, that's true. And I think I think uh, Trump will ch change all that about the border when he yes. comes, come, gets elected. Yes. Uh, I just feel like he's going to take care of that issue. He, yeah. He's very strongly talking about that. So that's something that needs to be taken care it of. It needs to be taken care of. Yes. Well, I didn't have a clue about J.D.'s past and his, his life. I didn't, I'd never heard of him, really. Well, it, it was crazy because then, of course, I had to watch the movie. And I will tell you, for all my good Baptist and good friends, there's a lot of rough language in this movie, but it is his true life story. And I had a very, very hard time watching it because I have a child who was an addict for many years. And now, thank you God, she's been clean and sober almost 18 years. But um, there were times that her children went through some of some things like JD's mother put him through, whether it was having to see a mom who was addicted or whatever, right. you know. It was a very, very hard movie to watch. Well, I want to go see it. I haven't got to see well, it yet. Well, you Netflix it. You have to do it on Netflix. I okay. was going to buy it, and I don't. I sure don't support Netflix. And if I don't, no, don't say that. I don't. So I don't support it. Mm -hmm. The only reason I watched it is because it's on Netflix. But I um, was going to buy the DVD or the Blu-ray, and it was like twenty-nine dollars. Uh -huh. And then I thought, well, I'll watch it and see. And it it did traumatize me a little bit because. I relived a lot of what my grandchildren saw because we all know when you're addicted, you do things that you're not yeah. responsible for. You do things that hurt other people. You And his mother has now been clean and sober 10 years. And so we say today, 
not only pray for our vice president and our president to be, pray for his mom to yes. remain clean and sober because a 10 year anniversary is very, very important and that will happen in January. And um, JD had said, he said, wouldn't it be awesome if we could celebrate my mom's sobriety oh. in the White House? Do you know how many families who watch me today have family members who either died of an overdose or we have people here at ETC who, you know, we know close people who we lost them very, yeah. very young because of an overdose. It's, it's life. It's it is life part of and life. It's very sad that it's yeah. that way. There, yeah. There's so much to live for and so much to be thankful for. Uh, I just can't imagine being a drug addict and it's turning so to the hard. drugs. But yeah. once they do it, then it just once gets they do it. hold of them and they can't help themselves. And really. his mom was a nurse. She was a registered nurse. And that's how she got hooked on drugs yeah. because working long hours and doing, going to school and da 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 da. And you do something to make you feel a little better. Right. And then once you do that, then you become addicted to it. And um, I just, I had a hard time with that movie. Mm -hmm. I, I, at one point in time, I almost turned it off because I thought, oh, this is digging up too much. It's hard to watch. Right. But at the same time, I think about every single time I think I'm going to retire, which ain't going to happen. <laughs> then I'll be walking out of Walmart and somebody will say, you know, I guess you heard about my son, he took his life. I guess you heard about my daughter, she's now clean and sober. I guess you heard about people share their stories with me. So I challenge America to today look at addiction as an illness. Yes. And look at <clears throat> what we can do to help those who became addicted for whatever reason. Right. And one of the things we found that if you have been abused and things happen to you as a child that you hold back and you can't deal with often you become addicted because you're trying to to hide that pain and to do away with that pain and and so people don't choose to be addicts right. something happens no there's a lot of good people something that turned happens. into addicts yeah. and it's just a and we look Sad at our military, thing. how many have come home with PTSD yes. and they become addicted. Yes. So while that man that was in the White House that's fixing to leave was <laughs> opening the borders and bringing in all these illegal people and giving them money and taking them, putting them in $500 a night hotels, my veterans, my veterans who had all kinds of mental and health issues we're living on the street. Oh, I know. It's awful. We're living on the street. And that's so wrong, too. It's wrong. It is absolutely it's wrong. It's awful. And I we like have to see them treated to, that way. But you know what can change it? You and I can. Yes. We can bring all our friends, all our neighbors, all our family together, and we can vote to bring to America bring them, back. Yes. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's going to happen. I feel real strong about that. I think I Trump, so. Trump don't have to go through all he's going through to be the president. No. He, don't, he don't need that job. Or no. He probably well, don't even want it, but he cares about America. He cares about America. And you know who said it best? Kid Rock. He yes. said, if you are stupid enough to believe that a man 77 years old who has never committed a crime in his life now is 91 felons against him. Yeah. This crap was created. Yes, it, was it was drug out of somebody's yes. brain or somewhere else of their body. Yeah. And they did all this stupid stuff. Yeah. And it's crazy because now we look at the real picture. Was the assassination because this kid was mentally deranged over all the things he heard? Was this because this kid was angry? Why did this assassination, how did we allow that to happen well, in America? Was, and he was just 20 or 21 years yeah, old, such yeah. a young kid. I don't know how it happened in America. It shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened, but, yeah. but what really gets me, I have great respect for the Secret Service, but I have zero respect for the head of the Secret Service. And that I loved a line that I heard in all the all the things that we've heard on television the last couple of weeks. My favorite line was, "DEI means if you are being protected by the Secret Service, you are going to DIE because our protection has changed from a, a strong, burly man to a five foot four woman who can't get her gun in the holster." Oh Lord. And that scares me. I don't want a woman protecting me. No. If somebody's coming after me, get me the biggest, meanest jerk you can find right. with a gun yes. and protect me. Yes. And so that DEI, to me, is destroying the world. Mm. And again, here, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna get some heat for this because I 
am a businesswoman. I have run businesses since I was 23 years old. Right. I do not want a female president or vice president. And y'all can think I'm stupid if you want to. I want military background, which J.D. Vance has, and I want business background, which Trump has. Right. Now, I think the greatest thing that could ever happen, and you're going to laugh at this. I don't know if we can make it happen, but I think we might. Okay, we're going to have Trump and J.D. four years. Then we're going to have J.D. and Ron DeSantis eight years. That'd be great. Eight, eight years. <laughs> you don't got it all figured out, haven't you? <laughs> figured out. And by then, in 12 years, I'll be so old, it won't matter. <laughs> you won't know who president I'm is. I'm trying to get my presidency through my lifetime. You know? I'm trying to, I'm trying well, to seal the deal. That's you know? funny. <laughs> but if you watch DeSantis, he was so good at the at the convention. He was oh, he so was good. wonderful. Yeah, he was so good. And I don't want DeSantis in there now because DeSantis has done so much for Florida and old people love to retire to Florida. I don't want to mess up their gig down there because right. they got it going on. My brother-in-law still lives in Florida, my sister's husband, and, and, and he loves Florida. So we don't want to mess Florida up by taking DeSantis to the White House right, right now. Right. We want, we want J.D. Vance and we want Trump four years, then we want J.D. Vance and DeSantis eight years. That'd be wonderful. And then. <laughs> Maybe Eric or Don Jr. You know, we'll, right. we'll go there. Yeah, maybe they'll be ready to give. By their then, life. they might. Yeah, 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 yeah. They need a little time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you know, what an amazing family the Trump family is. Oh my goodness, they looked so nice the other night on TV. They Can were you all imagine they're re representing and supporting um, Donald Trump, and I just thought, what yeah. a beautiful family. What a beautiful family. Can you imagine being our first lady of Melania Trump sitting at home with Barron when her husband? I caught know. a bullet to the side of his head. I can't imagine. Can you imagine what that was like? Oh. And 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 I just, you know, I, I'm i Everybody who knows me knows, I really, really, really dislike what happened to the current president because he was led astray and he was carried around and he was coddled when he wasn't mentally or no. physically able. No, he wasn't. And I blame it's one person. Of, I feel sorry for him. Really. I feel sorry for him and I blame one person because you know you loved your husband beyond yes. and I loved mine. There is no way I would have publicly displayed my husband in the condition he was in. No. And when my husband was battling cancer, I kept him away from people because he began to he 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 looked bad and he felt bad and and so we just went out and did things ourselves, went riding around in the country, did stuff like that. Never would you publicly display that. It was so sad to see him deteriorate. Right. Well, we have watched this poor man for four years deteriorate. Absolutely. From the beginning of that presidency, we saw him deteriorate. Yeah, he was having some issues. and He, he was, he, from day one. He was, I mean, he was trying, but I guess it was just not a job he needed. He was, no, he was no. too old for the job. Right. Well, and there we go. I, the one other thing, and I will get in trouble for this, and David Ralston and I talked about this a lot. I think term limits should happen. I think 12 years, and, and David explained it to me best. He said the first four years, you barely find out where the restroom is at the Capitol. It, it takes you that long to figure <laughs> to things out. Everything. The next four years, you gain a little respect from other people. Yeah. And then the last four years, you do your job. That man who's in the White House today has been there 50 years in politics and he has become a very, 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 very wealthy man. Okay, we know what the salary is, do the math. Do the math and yeah. look at all they found in all the checking accounts and you will see that it's more than being working for right. us. It's more than working for us. And it makes me nervous, you know, it makes me nervous that we allowed that to happen we didn't take charge. We didn't get together and say, you know, guys, something's wrong with this. Yeah. Something's wrong with just this. Just kind of let it go by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we become complacent and we just say, oh, I'm busy. I got kids in soccer and I got this and I got that. No, we need to take yeah. care of America. We need to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's like the day that Donald Trump came down the escalator. I still cry when I see that scene. Me and a bunch of old widow women were sitting around in ball ground celebrating that day. When he was inaugurated, we celebrated that day. We will continue to celebrate America when we get somebody back in the White House who is truly protecting America. Absolutely. Not giving it away, not selling it through different ways, and not allowing it to become inferior by placing people in jobs. And, and I don't even know this woman at the Secret Service, but I know that if I'm a Secret Sur Service agent, I want a big burly man to be my boss. Yes. And I want somebody who is in charge 
and it just it scares me because we came this close, this close, to losing President Donald Trump. I know Trump. we did, very yeah. close, very close. Uh, and I think whenever um, they had uh, Joe Biden speaking, and it was so pitiful when he was up there trying to speak and talk, and it was sad uh, during the debate. It was just pitiful. I think all the other countries around the world were laughing at us too. Yes. Do you oh, feel yeah. that way? Yeah, and and we were we should be ashamed. Yeah. But the person who'd be ashamed would be his wife of 15 yeah, years. Yeah, Jill. Yeah. Yeah, she should never ever have allowed her husband to be exposed like that. And she's a doctor, isn't she? I mean. Yeah, and I'm five foot two and a bleach blonde and weigh 120. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, she is, I guess. Yeah. She's got a degree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I just feel like we're on a good... We're on a uh, good... Uh, good... Uh, I think we are. And once again, <laughs> healed about my sign. I'm yes. so proud. I can tell it's really used. <laughs> it's used. It's been used a bunch. Paid for by Donald J. Trump for president. Yay. And I got this. We went to North Carolina, and, and I t I've told this story many times. That was my first Trump rally and years and years ago, and it was so weird because there were, there were American there, there were Spanish there, there were Chinese there, there were Vietnamese there, there were uh, people from Pennsylvania there, there were people from everywhere in North Carolina. And we all were standing around talking, you know, and we were like, where are you from, Kentucky? Where are you from, Ohio? Where are you from, Indiana? Everywhere. And they all gathered, yeah. And what did we have in common? We wanted to fix what was broken yes. in America. Yes, And we had four years, and I kind of, my accountant really laughs at this, I'm sure, because my income went from here to here in these past four years because there wasn't anything working right. to make it work. We saw the interest rates inflated. We saw so many crazy things happening. And today, as I came up the road, I remembered the last day I filled up at 168 a gallon. And it was when President Trump was in office. And I was standing at the pump smiling. And this morning, it was 319. It's much, much higher in other places. It's as high as $7 a gallon in Alaska. And they shut down the pipelines. And they shut down the money that was helping the residents of Alaska to mm -hmm. pay their taxes because they get this little rebate once a year from the oil companies for all the profits they made for being Alaska residents. You don't get that now. That's terrible. It, it, they're going to have to work it back in once we get a president right. in there that lets us drill, baby, drill. Right. I yeah. think Trump will definitely take care of a lot of those issues. I feel so sorry for families that's got children and they're mm -hmm. trying to feed the families. Mm -hmm. And they can hard, they're can they struggling. They can right. hardly buy the food. The right. Groceries have gone so high and all the uh, medical bills and everything else that's involved, like the gas. I mean, I remember it's when crazy. Trump had it under control oh, yeah. uh, when he was our president, and he's he's going to do that again. Mm -hmm. I really feel like mm -hmm. it's coming on. I feel like he is, and and I honestly, when I watched after I watched the movie about J.D. Vance, I thought, what are the odds of this man being our vice president? As a child, he was man. So much happened to him, and then for him to get to to Yale that, and be yeah. the head of his class and to be a very, very, very smart attorney, and he does speeches well, and he, he connects with America because he lived the American dream. He's from Kentucky and Ohio. Yeah. You can't get any more American uh, than Kentucky and Ohio. Absolutely. So, I think he's going to do well, and I think he's making a lot of people happy, too. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people was very proud of Trump that he chose him. Yes, yes. I've heard nothing but good things about that. Yeah, so. and we were all kind of like, well, which way do we want Trump to go? What direction do we want him to turn in? I did not see this one coming, but I think it's the perfect choice. Did. Uh, -uh I think it's the perfect choice. Yeah, I did and too. and I heard Don Jr. speaking about him, and he was talking about what a good guy J.D. Vance is, and I said that's what we want. We just want a good guy. Yes. Here. We don't want somebody that we have to worry. Are you connected with the Chinese? Are you taking yeah. bribes here? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? This is a young family man with three children, and a beautiful wife who's an attorney. Yes. you know, brilliant. And um, I think we have the best of everything we could have asked for. I do for. too. God's, yeah. God's really uh, looked after us, yes. hasn't he? <laughs> yes, he has, because he looked down and said, y'all are in trouble. Yes. <laughs> y'all are in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. Yeah, well, I want to share some photos, because we were gone for a few days while Trace took a well-deserved vacation, and uh, y'all got to see some reruns last week. You got to see Miss Hill in a rerun last week, and me. But today we want to show you and update you with some photos from the past week or so. And one of the things that I'm involved in is Dominic's mission 
in Ball Ground. Dominic's Mission is a food pantry started by one of our local businessmen and his wife. There's Miranda and Dom. And they are New Yorkers who came to Georgia and said, if you're going to reside in a community and you make a living on the community, you should give back. And they started Dom's Food Pantry. They serve over 200 families weekly. And if you think it isn't important today, in today's world when the prices of groceries are absolutely out of sight and crazy, then you need to think again. And I, and I have to say thank you to several of the businesses actually in Blue Ridge who have helped me by giving me things to take to the food pantry. If you have a store and you have things that are almost out of date, if you over ordered something, um, it would be wonderful if you would help this food pantry because again, even though very affluent Cherokee County is doing well in many areas, we have people actually living in the ball ground area who do not even have electricity. So there are many people struggling who have limited income and there's a little bit about Dominic get online and check them out but it is such good good people and again he says if you are living in a community and you're not giving back shame on you so um, so many great business people were there who have been partners since day one and I remember when we were sitting in his restaurant and he told me he said I'm gonna start a food pantry and I got my checkbook out and wrote him a check and he said well what do you want me to do with it I said I don't care what you do with it just add it to your pot so and that, y'all, is our family. Look at this. They were born mm -hmm. 65 days ago. And there's the mom and dad in the lead and the four babies. And, and I've got a picture of them there when they were babies. That's so hard to believe mm -hmm. that those geese grew that fast, but they're so beautiful. And that's at Malone's Pond. That's my view from the office. Now, that's a pretty nice view to have every day. So I absolutely love it. But when we're looking around at life in 60 days, those those geese have grown from tiny tiny little babies hatching out of eggs and that's me i was so happy that day because mm -hmm. i had just left jeremy bruce's office and he fixed my back because my back was giving me such fits last week y'all i thought i was thought i had kidney stones and i was laying in the floor squalling and crying but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway he fixed me there's the babies when they were first born oh. and then you saw them on the lake here just 62 days later that's crazy or 65 days later it's crazy how fast they grew. And you know, when we look around, now there's the movie, and I'm telling y'all, it is not for the weak-hearted, or if, if cussing a lot really bugs you, then you might ought to not watch it, but it is so true. It is so hard for me to believe that Glenn Close did this part because she looks so much like his grandmother. It is amazing. So I hope that if you if your heart can stand it and if your mind can stand it. Now there's our Indian tree that um, is, we're, we're talking about that a lot lately because I tell all developers, if you come in and you buy land in Georgia, please walk the property before you start taking down trees and before you bring in bulldozers. And please be respectful of those who went before us because there are many pieces of Georgia history that are still on the land that has been undeveloped. And just walk the land, check it out, and make sure that you don't take down a part of Indian history or a part of Georgia history. You know, there are things, and look at this, y'all. This is Laura Mays. You've got to go have lunch there. This is Miss Laura Mays. The building belongs to Lee and Brittany Lusk. It is a beautiful historical home that belonged to Miss Laura May Mitchell, who lived there for many, many years as she ran Citizens Bank and Ball Ground. And that's the sky behind them that's on a beautiful. day that literally at Malone's Pond, it was pouring down rain and I was walking around with an umbrella. And then Evelyn catches that glimpse right down the street. That's so is that not amazing? Isn't that beautiful? And it's just, just beautiful. And that was last week. I think it was last Thursday evening. And there we are at the uh, Dominic's. This is, this is business leaders. There's Annette, she's on our city council, and then our neighbors who own the tavern, they're next door to us, and just good folks. And, and the other folks are starting a development in Ball Ground, a 400-acre track that they're purchasing, and uh, just people giving back. And that's what we try to do as business leaders. If you have a profitable business, then yeah, please give back to the communities that you serve. That's what we are, that's what God tells us to do. Absolutely, he that's wants us to give back. That's what we are told. Now this is that iconic photo that we will never, ever, ever forget. I will never forget the moment. I was leaving work, my phone rang, and they said, are you in front of a TV? And I said, no, I'm jumping in the car, leaving work. And they said, well, 
your president's been shot, but he's going to be okay. And I was like, oh my gosh. I know. I was just shocked to death about it. We were oh on the gosh. lake having a picnic uh, with about 14 people. We got a call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was truly so scary. And and when I look at how it happened, we don't know yet. We don't know what the Everybody assumes it's that lone gunman who was just angry and had some problems, and I think it was. I don't think it was conspiracy. No, I don't think so at all. Yeah, I don't think it was conspiracy. I think this young man just, he had heard all kinds of rhetoric about Trump, and he was believing this stuff, which is crazy because, you know, I totally dislike the First Lady today, but I'm not going to say she's crazy. I'm just going to say she's disrespectful of her husband. Right. But they said so many bad and evil things about Trump, and this kid, 20 years old, maybe he just got confused and angry. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. But He's he came very young. close. Now look at that. Is that not the most amazing picture? I know. It truly is. And, and somebody, that reporter that I won't say her name because I can't stand her, she said something negative about Trump going in with a bandage on his ear. Well, I can guarantee you the doctor told him when to take the bandage off. Lady, you don't. You're not a doctor and you don't tell him when to take it off. Right. But then I rode down the road two years after COVID and I would see somebody in a car and I'd always get around them and look and see where their tag was to see how stupid they were <laughs> because they would have a mask on in their own car yeah, alone. So and yeah. I'm like, what is wrong with By you people? Self. <laughs> By themselves. I'm like, do you think you're going to give yourself cooties? What is wrong with y'all? But they made it. Now look at that. That's My precious. life, y'all, that little girl brings more joy to so many people. She is and looks just like her mama. She is so precious. That's your grandbaby. That's my great grandbaby and her mama, yes. And they love, they they have the happiest, sweetest life. I'm so thankful. You talk about God blessing us, that child. Look at those pearls. Oh my gosh. She is she is amazing. Amazing. Now this is Evelyn's photography. This is to me an award winning photo. Is that not that absolutely is gorgeous? Need to enter that in the photography exhibit at the George Mountain Fair. Oh, yes. The oh, fair. yes. That's oh, beautiful. yes. Isn't that beautiful? And it was just a rare shot. She was just up on, on top of the hill. And like I said, I was walking around Malone's Palm with an umbrella. And I'm like, this is crazy. But yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I, you're going to see that in our opening from now on because we're going to change our opening. And, and look at that. I mean, that that is just, that's not Photoshop, that's real, you know? That is real, and it's just so beautiful, so beautiful, so. Laura Mays. Laura Mays. Laura is that Mays. in ball ground? It is, uh-huh. It's, it's right on the corner at the four-way stop sign. It's just right down across from the library. Okay. Yeah, really close, yeah. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're talking Georgia Mountain Fair because you know what's fixing to happen? The Georgia Mountain Fair is coming to town. And i got to remind y'all, and I, I hold this book all the time, Mike and Diane Smith are part of the Dominic's Mission. They go and deliver boxes to families all over the county, and they pray with them. And they pray with them because they know that prayers are answered. Their young son was diagnosed with cancer, he is now over 40 years old. He has his own family. God is still in the miracle business. So if you're worried about somebody, if you're thinking about somebody, everything you ever needed to know about life, Mike put in this book. And it is their life through their journey of a long, long marriage and the trials and tribulations they faced. So pick up a copy of it. It's a great gift. I've given away about 20 of them now. And this is mine and you ain't getting it. <laughs> You ain't getting it, but um, such such a joy to read and to share and to and to listen. And you might you might understand quickly too. Mike has a little bit of bulldog in him, so he he's a Georgia bulldog. So so we're gonna uh, talk about that with him in the near future. They're gonna be back to visit. So we're gonna take a break. When we come back, it's Georgia Mountain Fair time. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. 
Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I grow your grown up, every way, every way, care of me, care of you. You're my grown up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown up, and you know I care. Cause it's you and me, and me, and you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. What are these mountains known for? Uh, music. Music. Country music. music capital of Georgia. Lots of music. <laughs> music and fiddles and banjos. And this this is one of the big to-do events, isn't Yes, it? it is. The Daily Events and American Made Festival has yeah. been going on for several years. And we sold it out every year up until COVID. After COVID, we've not sold it out. We're trying to get back to selling it yeah. out. But yeah. It's a three-day event with Daily and Vincent playing each day. And mm -hmm. it's got... Shannon Doyle, Ricky Skaggs, Kentucky and, Rick, and Kentucky Thunder, and Tracy Bird, and the Co Cody Norris Show, and the Gatlin Brothers, and Neil McCoy. It's an absolutely wonderful three days of music and yeah. entertainment. And, um, In the greatest venue ever. Yes, it yeah. is a wonderful venue. Yeah. We yeah. seat 2,900 people there at the George Mountain Fairgrounds, and we got air conditioning in there, so it's nice and cool. We got concessions and food trucks and Vendors the set up cream, around the best, the best ice, ice cream, cream around. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a great cream. time to come out. You can come and camp there on the fairgrounds and just walk to the venue if you mm -hmm. want to do that. So how are things going at the campground? Are they full? We've been very full. I think our camping might have been down just a little bit this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of the economy again. Gas people, prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can't people afford. Thinking, yeah. They're keeping them parked. Yeah. But um, we have the VIP. If you buy VIP tickets, to that which have uh, sold almost. 400 VIP for the three days. Uh, we'll have the VIP uh, meet and greet party up at the Hamilton Gardens at the Pavilion up there. Mm -hmm. We'll do it on Friday for an hour and we'll do it on Saturday and you'll get your swag. Uh, you'll have a, a real nice uh, poster that Daly and Vincent will sign. Mm -hmm. You'll get to do the meet and greet and then they'll give you a lanyard and it'll be a beautiful area because you can see Brasstown Ball Mountain from up there wow, and it's, it's so, so pretty. pretty. Yeah. It is gorgeous. Yeah. But yeah. we got something really cool coming up next weekend. This is the first time we've ever done this. What July, is it? July 27th, we're having a laser show. Oh, wow. And, uh, like they do at Stone Mountain. Yes, kind of like Stone yeah. Mountain. And there's yeah. not one in the area that we know of. And yeah. that'll be Saturday, July 27th. And we've got... Um, uh, the company is out of Minnesota that's going to be doing it, and they'll and they'll have music to it and everything. We were going to have it in the parking lot, and we was going to put up a big screen up at the top of the hill at the gardens, mm -hmm. and people could sit in their cars or they could bring lawn chairs and sit out and look towards the gardens and see it. Um, but the trees were blocking the view of the lights, uh -huh. so we ended up putting it on, we're going to have it on the ball field. So you'll okay. park in the parking lot, we'll have shuttles running out of the, 
and the trolley running out of the parking lot and take you down to the front gate mm -hmm. and then we'll have golf carts taking you from down there on down to the ball fields but we actually start at four o'clock that afternoon with we got two bands that'll be playing just inside the fairgrounds mm -hmm. uh, you'll go to the left it's called um, Eller Holler we've got the True Youngblood band he's bringing his band out in Asheville and then we have the, it's called ju uh, Jukebox Country. They played there in the spring, and I'm mm -hmm. telling you, they were absolutely wonderful. Wow. So we have a little stage down there, we got seating, or you can bring seats or blankets or whatever. We'll have food trucks, and Calvary Church is coming, and they're bringing a, a, a foam pit, and I don't know, all different kinds of uh, activities, bouncy houses, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do cornhole, uh, just a lot of activities going on, so you can sit there and enjoy all that, and then just go right on over to the ball field, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. um, what does it cost to do that? It's ten dollars per person, and okay. under twelve is free. Okay. And uh, so for a family, basically, if your kids are under twelve, twenty bucks for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. Wow. And then you get to enjoy the music down there. If you want food or drinks or anything, mm -hmm. that's extra, you know. Right. But it's a beautiful setting there in Eller Holler. We've got a pavilion there, and we have a bar set up, and it's right on the water, and the big water wheels turning, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of shade and everything down there. It's just we had some spring concerts down there. Very nice part of the fairgrounds. That's going to be neat. Yeah. 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 So then we'll have that on July 27th, and then we go right into the Georgia Mountain Fair shortly after that on August the 16th through the 24th. We actually have our beauty pageant August the 15th, Miss Georgia Mountain Fair pageant. So if you want to enter the pageant, it's not too late. We'd love to have some more contestants uh, sign up, and uh, whoever wins the pageant goes on to uh, uh, be compete in the Miss Fairs to the fairs. And uh, it's not really all about winning, it's just the experience and, mm -hmm. and how much it builds your confidence up to be able to do mm -hmm. something like that. And it, the, do they have a talent part of that? Well, you, it's optional, it's okay. not scored on your talent. If you okay. want to do talent, you can, it's optional. Okay. But um, it's, it's evening gown and questions and interviews by the judges and it's just a wonderful thing to do. And, and like I said, it's great experience for young ladies to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, be sure you contact us at the George Mountain Fairgrounds if you're interested, or you can go onto our website and also download the application. Uh, but the fair starts on August the 16th, and our opening day, uh, we have already sold about 2,000 tickets, and that's going to be Gene Watson and the Bellamy oh, Brothers. Oh, wow. wow. So, he's such a good guy. Yes. We're, and we're, isn't he 80 or 81? I think he's 81, yeah, because yeah. I remember when he celebrated yeah. his 80th birthday. But yeah. we've sold over 2,000 tickets already. That's it's hard. Awesome. It's uh, reserved seats, so you need to get your tickets for that or you can buy them at the door if they're still available. Mm -hmm. But the Arts and Crafts will be open. We're changing up the fair a little bit this year. We're doing long weekends and not doing it on Monday. Mon and I say we're not doing it, I mean just the music and the crafts we won't be having on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday mm -hmm. because we were paying so much for the talent and through mm -hmm. the week we were losing money on it. So yeah. Uh, we'll do the weekends, long weekends, and then the carnival will be coming in and they'll be doing all nine days. So mm -hmm. they'll be open and it'll be free to get into the carnival on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But um, we got, like I said, we have Gene Watson on Friday, him and uh, the Bellamy brothers. Uh, we got um, Tommy James and the Shondells coming on Saturday. You talk about a show now. Yeah, if you're into that yeah, kind of music, yeah, it is yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah. I hope people will come out and support all uh, this. Did they do Dizzy? No, that's Tommy Rose. Crimson and Clover. That's Tommy Rose. Oh, Crimson and Clover. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, some really good songs. And um, the Vic, I don't know if you're familiar with the Vintage Vixens, but they're going to open for Tommy James and the Shondells. Okay. It's a, it's kind of a like, it's all female band. They're uh -huh. out of Atlanta. I remember seeing their pictures. And they kind of dress hippie looking like back yeah. in the 70s. But yeah. I had them there on the 4th of July. And they are so good. People just love them. So I'm bringing them back to open for Tommy James. And they're just absolutely beside their self. They're getting to That's open cool. for Tommy James and the Shondells. Then on Sunday, we have a gospel show. We have church services at 11 o'clock. And the flower show opens that day at 10 o'clock. And that's the Hawassi Garden Club has a state judge flower show. Mm -hmm. And the uh, carnival rides open at 12 that day. And the Martins and the Inspirations and the Perrys are going to be there, That'll which be is awesome. all three good, yeah. good groups. Oh, yeah. It really is. Yeah. And, the past and the Inspirations, if you haven't seen the new Inspirations, they are as good as, <coughs> or better, don't say I said that, Matt Dibler. <laughs> they are so good. And if you're not watching the TV and you're hearing them, you uh -huh. think it's the old ones. I know, they're wonderful. You, I, they I, are, and they're musically more talented on instruments than the 
inspirations have ever been. Yeah. They play more instruments and they know more about music than the inspirations ever did. They just kind of followed Martin Leeds Cook, Martin Cook's lead. Yes. And they all could sing great. Right. But none of them were musicians like they have now. Right. They are They're, amazing. They are. They got a lot of talent. Yeah. And the church services is going to be uh, Reagan Riddle, which was with the Primitives. It's going to be his son-in-law that will be uh, conducting the church services. You know how so. many times I went there and saw Dr. Jerry Goff? There's no telling because I had him for over 50 years. I went every time I could. Oh, and I miss him so what much. What a great message. Oh, oh I know. what a great message. He I mean, always delivered a good message. He did yeah. and just yeah. a wonderful person. I just yeah. really, really miss him. And like I said earlier, Monday, uh, August the 19th will be just the carnival with the rides opening at 4 o'clock. And that's $2 days. So if you want to get a good deal, you can ride wow. the rides for $2. Wow. And it doesn't cost anything to get into the fair. And then Tuesday, the same thing. We open at 4. And there's armbands. It's unlimited rides, uh, uh, $25. And uh, you can sp it's special for two people. And then Wednesday, the uh, 21st, we have carnival rides. Same thing. We'll have the $25 unlimited rides special for two. And then Thursday, August the 22nd, this is free military day and first responders, so you'll get into the fair. It doesn't include the shows because we're selling reserve seats on all these shows. And we're spending a lot more money on the talent this year, mm -hmm. so we had to go up on the ticket prices for the shows and have a ticket just for the shows. Sure. But uh, Pioneer Village and the crafts and everything, got all the booths filled up. Everything's completely full. That opens at 11, and the photography show opens at 11 o'clock that day. So if you're into photography, just like that picture you showed there I early. think we need to enter it. Yes, yes I, I think, think that'd be wonderful to have that. What else shows the mountains any better I know, than that? and yeah. there's prize money. There's We have judges that come in and judge it, and there's prize money given, so come out and get involved in that. We've got a lot of applications that's come in, but we can certainly take more. Mm -hmm. uh, then 4 p.m. is the carnival rides open again, and then that night at 7 p.m. in the music hall, we have American Pop which is the box tops, the grassroots, and the Buckinghams. That'll so be awesome. That'll be a wonderful yeah. show. Kind of a drag. Yes. <laughs> kind of a drag. <laughs> and then on Friday, August the 23rd, uh, we were supposed to have the Guess Who, but there was some situations that came up with this that was beyond our control that we had to cancel the contract with them. They were in an argument, was going to court, and they, who was going to sing the hits and who wasn't going to sing the oh hits. Oh, my goodness. And if I had them, if, if I brought them, I wasn't going to be able to, they couldn't sing their hits. And I thought, well, what would be need going yeah. to the concert if you can't hear the hits? Yeah. Yeah. So we ended up, it's wrong on our brochure because we already had these already had these printed, but we were able to get the Oak Ridge Boys. Oh, that's and awesome. And they yeah. are on their farewell tour yep. and Joe who passed away just recently uh, so sad about that but he had uh, actually retired as the end of last, last year in December so mm -hmm. I knew he wasn't going to be on the tour mm -hmm. with them on the farewell tour so they have Ben James that's replaced him and doing an outstanding job and those tickets are available they're on, all these tickets are on sale so get your tickets and come out and see them because probably this will be the last time to see them in Hiawassee. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I'll be having them back anymore. Yeah. Um, Saturday, the last day of the fair, August 24th, is Crowder, and that show has sold out. We're wow. actually stand, uh, selling outside standing room, so wow. you can bring a chair or a blanket or whatever, but it's completely sold out. And the crafts open at 10 o'clock that morning, and then the photography exhibit is also open, and the carnival rides are open at 12 o'clock that day. So there's a lot to see and do, some great entertainment, mm -hmm. and just come for the whole entire time and just really come and uh, camp in the campground. You can stay in the hotels or uh, bed and breakfasts or cottages or whatever in the area. There's plenty of places to stay, so make sure you come out and see all that. And do. Are you still doing billboards? South of I Atlanta. am, yes. Yeah. My billboards yeah. are going up now. One other thing I just forgot, almost forgot to mention was our ground entertainment. We got the Disc uh, Connected K-9 Dogs. This is a professionally trained uh, dog show, 16 dogs performing and, and the hundreds of freestyle moves and tricks and it's got music to it. And it's a stage. It'll be set up down there wow. in Eller Holler. So make sure you come out and enjoy that as well. And, um, and bring your children and your grandchildren and just have a big time at the George Mountain Fairgrounds. <laughs> How many years is this? Well, actually, this we didn't get to have the fair, you know, in uh, 2020 yeah. because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really celebrating 73 years since we didn't have it. It's supposed to be in the 74th year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. next year, we were planning to do the uh, 75th anniversary mm -hmm. party and celebrate 75 years. So that's what we're going to do, even though we didn't get to have the fair in mm -hmm. 2020. We've got a lot planned. We're updating. i got a lady that's updating our history book on the Georgia Mountain Fair. We're going to have that available for uh, next year. We're Can you remember people talking about 
the first time the fair came to town. Yeah, what I was, was it like for locals to? Was it just locals who went? I was. It was locals. I wasn't born. I was. We had the first fair in 1950, and mm -hmm. I was born in 55. But I went to the fair all my life when I was a little kid, and just uh -huh. thought it was the grandest thing because it was the only thing happening around there. Uh -huh. But the first year that they had the fair, it was like up there at the old high school where I graduated from, downtown Hiawassee, there where the bank's at now. But uh, they they had the fair and just had it during the day, I think just for a few hours, and mm -hmm. then it continued to grow, and they started charging 25 cents to get into the fair. <laughs> 25 cents? <laughs> yeah, 25 cents. Uh, big deal, right? <laughs> That's crazy. But as time went on, and people, all the volunteers in the community, and there was actually an uh, insurance salesman from uh, over in LJ, I believe it was LJ, that, came to Hiawassee, Mr. Tabor, I don't know if you know who mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. and he saw, and he would get with all the businessmen there in Hiawassee, and he said, we, we need a fair up here to help the economy and bring uh -huh. things, people to the area, so that's how it all started, uh -huh, uh -huh. and of course, the Lions Club got behind it and uh, helped volunteer and uh -huh. make it happen, and just people in the community, and year after year, it started, you know, just continually growing, and I went to work there in 1981. I've been there 43 years. Isn't that crazy? I know. I started there when I was 25, and it's just been a, I've seen a lot of growth. I mean, a lot, we've added a lot of events and uh, concerts and special events. And you've always outside. had the support of the county. Yes, the support of the whole yeah. community, yeah. really. Yeah. Everybody gets behind it and really. Nobody said, we don't want all this traffic. We don't want all this mess. Well, you hear it occasionally. Yeah. They'll say, that old yeah. fair brings all this traffic yeah. in here. But it's people that don't want no traffic <laughs> right. and they want to stay the same little Hawassi that yeah. used to be. I like growth a lot. I think growth's really important. It just needs to be done in the right way. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the George Mountain Fair has brought thousands and thousands of tourists to Towns County and not only helping Towns County, but the surrounding counties sure. around us. It's yeah. been huge. Yeah. It really has. But uh, that's the fair schedule. And then we've, like I said earlier, we got the daily events at <laughs> American right. Made Festival coming up. Yeah. And we have Emmy Lou Harris coming up. And she's not touring a whole lot, but she um, chose Hiawassee, which I feel honored. I think that's a wonderful uh -huh. thing uh -huh. that she wanted to do our little venue because she can go anywhere in the world. And, perform but she's doing you know on tour and she did decide she'd do Hawassi so we're very thankful for that and then um, we when will she be there? She'll be there September the 14th okay. and those tickets are on sale we've sold a lot of tickets I think we've sold about 1500 tickets already on that show but uh, they are on sale if you want to purchase tickets mm -hmm. and um, she's not cheap she's she uh, it's costing us a lot of money and she, you know what they say you get what you pay for yes and she's a legend, I'm telling you. She's a legend. And it's going to be called yeah. An Evening with Emmy Lou. She wouldn't let anybody open for her, but she's agreed uh -huh. to uh, do a uh, intermission, and she's going to do 120 minutes. So wow. it's going to be wow. a wonderful. And they wow. say, everybody says she's never been there. And everybody says, oh, she's so nice. Hilda. And I said, I can't wait to see her yeah. and meet her and talk yeah. to her. But we also have the Neil Diamond tribute coming up October the 5th. Uh, those tickets are on sale. Uh, that will be a really good show. And then... October the 11th, this is during the Fall Festival, we have Dylan Scott. He's never been there before. I don't know if you're familiar with Dylan mm -hmm. Scott, but he's mm -hmm. one of the younger artists that's come out and he's absolutely selling like crazy. I'm mm -hmm. just amazed. So if you want to get tickets for that, that's during the Fall Festival. And another thing uh, on the Fall Festival, that's October the 11th through the 19th. So we have, again, we've do we're doing the long weekends instead of trying mm -hmm. to do nine straight uh, mm -hmm. days and nights which um, on Thursday, October the 10th, the carnival opens. And then Friday, uh, October the 11th, we've got um, Dylan Scott. That's up, uh, the first act in the uh, music hall for the fall festival. And uh, the carnival that we have is gonna be um, a carnival out of South Carolina. And they were there last year, I think they're called Midway Rides, but they can only do the first weekend of the fall festival. They could, their their uh, routing didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, if you want to see the carnival, you need to come the first weekend. They'll be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and uh, Sunday. On Sunday, we've got, uh, well, Saturday, actually, October the 12th, we've got Joe Nicholson concert. And Joe Nichols is the one that sings uh, Tequila Makes Your Clothes Fall. <laughs> I mean, that was one of his hits. Lord. <laughs> He's got a great voice, Me and Regina though. Camp used to go down the road singing that. Neither one of us drank tequila, but we love that song. It's got a good beat to it, haven't we? <laughs> we love that song. That's so well, crazy. he'll be singing it in High Wassie, so uh, you'll have to come see it. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And I gave you some tickets to give I away, too. I my ice water instead of my tequila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, gosh and then on Sunday October the 13th we'll be having um, church services again at 11 o'clock and our uh, 
uh, carnival opens at 1, and then at 2 o'clock the gospel music starts, and we got the anthem edition, Lefevre Quartet, and Gold City. Wow. So Gold that's City's three. So good. There's yeah. three good groups. So yeah. if you yeah. want to come out and see that, it'd be great to. Uh, come in and enjoy that. And there's as well. not a better place for gospel music. And having it in the afternoon, you don't have to drive after dark. Because a lot true. of older people don't want to drive after dark. No, so, I, yeah, I, I get that. I'm got to get there myself. I know. I know. I started having these brown floaters. I had to cancel my eye appointment because of a conflict at work. I couldn't leave, and it's so crazy because now I need to see the doctor because I have these brown floaters. I don't know if it's old age or what it is. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Well, you know, it happens to all of us, but I'm not yeah. giving up. I'm going to keep no, on no. keeping on. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> on Thursday, October the 17th, this is free admission for the military and the first responders. And uh, we have at 11 o'clock the crafts and everything opening up. And at 7 o'clock that night, we have three dog nights. So wow. you need to come out. Wow. And, Bill uh, Senior to want to go to that, I bet yes, you. Yes, it's yeah. going to be good. I think, and, and it's really selling good. So yeah. I wouldn't wait yeah. too long about getting tickets yeah. if you're interested. And then Friday, October the 18th is Tracy Lawrence. We got him coming. And we just love Tracy Lawrence. Mm -hmm. He's He is unique and got a great voice. And we're excited. His show's really selling well as uh, you know, people buying in advance. And then on Saturday, October the 19th at 10 o'clock, the crafts and everything open up again, and we'll have Nate Smith in concert. And Nate Smith is a young artist coming up, and he is absolutely wonderful. I don't know how many people know who he is, but this is a picture of him, if you can see this. Uh -huh. Nate Smith, check him out. And he's such a nice guy, too. He is really mm -hmm. a true country music singer. So. Check Who him out. Who remembers what country music was? I know. Yes, yeah. he does. Yeah. I mean, there's a few still like there's that. There's a few. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we want to we want to help them survive. Right. Yeah. I want to I want to uh, see all the shows come. People come and enjoy. And again, like you said, we have the greatest venue around. It's mm -hmm. just one of the best places in the world to watch a concert. Yeah. And then we have the ground entertainment, which is uh, Cowboy Circus. It's the world's smallest rodeo. It combines cowboy tricks, uh, circus stunts, comedy, and music, and much more. Uh, it'll be down there in Eller Holler uh, where we have the stage and all. He's been here a couple of times. People just love him uh, and bring their kids, and mm -hmm. he teaches them how to uh, rope and how to they can ride the little uh, mechanical bulls and cows and everything he has, and he does little tricks and things. Speaking of mechanical bulls, you had Mickey Gilly right toward the end of his life. Yes. What a performer. Oh, my gosh. You, when we look back at the people you've had who are no longer with us, from Charlie Pride to Mickey Gilley to George Jones to uh, Percy Sledge. Percy Sledge. I know. You know, I was telling somebody about that Percy Sledge interview Saturday, and I said out of all the interviews, that I love Charlie Pride and love all of Charlie Pride's music, but when a man loves a woman, there's no song. Oh, I know. No song that didn't hit everybody, everybody loved it. You know, they and did. You, you remember the first time you heard it, you remember hearing it over and over and over, Percy Sledge. I, I got to interview Percy Sledge because he was coming to the Georgia Mountain Fair. Yes, I just think he was an awesome performer. Such a good performer. guy, I such know. a good guy. So nice too, And you he know. was a diabetic, he was a severe diabetic. Yes. And that's why, sadly he died, I think young, because he wasn't much older than me. Yeah, he, so, he yeah. was not old, no. We, uh -uh. we picked him up at Lake Chattooga Lodge and brought him down to the music hall and we got him to sing the first verse of When a Man Loves a Woman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the car, I mean in yeah. the band going oh, down there. Yeah. We had the best He's time together. Nice guy. And, and it's funny because when we were interviewing him, he said, you know about me, don't you? I said, honey, I grew up in Atlanta listening to your music at all the bars and all the, because that was his time. Yes. That was his, you know. And it was like, man, and when his music would come on, people would stop and listen, you know. He didn't have that many yeah. hits, huh? you know, but he really mm -hmm. had some good hits, some the ones good he ones. had. Absolutely. Yes, he did. Absolutely. We also got a stunt team that's going to be coming there performing uh, during the nine days of the George Mountain, I mean, of the Fall Festival. And they'll be flying over 10 feet in the air on all kinds of stunt equipment and doing some of the, uh, it's just absolutely amazing. I, I just want y'all to come out and see what we have to offer here. And all I that do a stunt, I get out of my car and don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> and all that's included in the $7 admission to get into the fair and under 12 is free. Mm -hmm. There is an extra price for the carnival and for the, uh, the concerts. But where can you go for $7 and, and under 12 okay. free? Yeah. So all of that's coming up and, and uh, free parking and lots of great food booths. We have all kinds of nice food down there. We have food booths and food trucks. And down in the exhibit hall, we have an antique farm museum with all types of antique farm and equipment. And the organs. And the organs are amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they They're are beautiful. so nice. Yeah. So Jerry Taylor will be uh, and Jeff King will be taking care of the exhibit hall again this year with all the exhibits and canned goods and uh 
we like you said the the organs you can go in there and play the organs mm -hmm. jerry will let mm -hmm. you play them and, and and all the antique farm equipment we've done a bunch of renovations down there got all of uh, got the qr codes on all the equipment mm -hmm. and everything and we've had more stuff donated to us too and you ought to see what we got donated for christmas and i cannot wait till christmas till we get all this set up we went down to gainesville georgia a few months ago this gentleman that had come to the fair for many years had a complete snow village it was on a big old eight foot table maybe two mm -hmm. eight foot tables mm -hmm. and had it all set up for us to see and it all lights up and everything mm -hmm. it is so pretty so he donated that to the georgia wow. mountain fair so we, he put it in all the boxes he had the original boxes and everything we brought that to back to hiawassee and we'll have that up during the mountain country christmas and lights so uh, be sure you go to the exhibit mm -hmm. hall when you come to the light show yeah. and the commissioner is in the process of buying a train for us uh, it's a, got a big diesel engine in it for the George Mountain Fairgrounds for the Mountain Country Christmas and Lights. Mm -hmm. So we'll be giving train rides. We're, we don't have it yet. We're still working with the company trying to mm -hmm. get it. But uh, we opened the light show on Thanksgiving night, and that's going to go through December the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And this year we're actually ex uh, extending the time a little bit more longer. Uh, we, the week of Christmas there, we're going to be open that whole week before Christmas and then the week of Christmas up through December 23rd. It's the way the calendar has failed this year. Mm -hmm. so come out and enjoy the walk through Christmas light show. We've got more lights, more, like I said, the tr train rides. Yeah, I'll do hot chocolate and things like that. We do that and we have mm -hmm. food. There's booths that do all kinds of chili and soups and grilled cheese. Something to keep you warm. Yeah, something yeah. hot to yeah. keep you warm. Yeah. We have fire pits where we roast the hot dogs and let the kids do the marshmallows and the mm -hmm. s'mores and everything. And something new that we've added this year is a magic show. It's a Christmas magic show and they're bringing their own stage uh, instead of having the animal farm and the petting zoo. Mm -hmm. I've had that several, several years, so we wanted to change it up a little bit. And they decorate it and fix it up in a Christmas theme, and uh, it's an illusion show. That, uh, they do a magic show, and it's just going to be wonderful. So come and see that and um, enjoy what we have to offer there. I mean, at Christmas time, it just gets you in the Christmas spirit. And, and again, people would say, well, I've already been to see that. Well, now you have something new, so yeah. they have another reason we to add, come back. Yeah, we yeah. add, we add yeah. new stuff every year. Yeah. And we've got booths. All the booths will be filled again. We're working on that now. So if you'd like to have a booth and advertise your business, or if you'd like to have a booth and sell something, mm -hmm. if you just want to advertise your business, uh, and decorate your booth, you don't, you, there's not a charge for it. I think if you have a booth and you sell food or uh, crafts or whatever, I think it's like $100 mm -hmm. for the whole entire time. And then we encourage all the churches in the area to come and uh, do carol and Christmas carols mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. through there. We have a big stage where we put people on the stage and let them perform. And um, we have canned music we play throughout the fairgrounds if we don't have anybody there singing. But that's a really nice way to get out and uh, uh, bring your youth and let them come and sing mm -hmm. and just really have a good time there yeah. at the fairgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mission. I mean, if you bring your church and your group and you come there and you uh, talk to people and uh, invite them to your church, you right. know, it's, it's, a, it's a church mission. And once again, the economy of Georgia would really fail if it weren't for the Georgia Mountain Fair. Absolutely. It, it brings would thousands really, We think we've been in trouble. We'd really be in trouble if people weren't leaving Florida, leaving Savannah. Yeah leaving all those towns south of us, and they're coming to the Georgia yeah. Mountain Fair and I'm actually, for over 70 years. Yeah, I'm actually going to Savannah, Georgia. I'm going to be on a TV show. It's a live show downtown Savannah. I'm leaving tonight, going to Chattanooga, doing a TV show in Chattanooga tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got AJC. I've contacted them. I did an ad with them and asked them about doing a story on the fair. I sent them a press release. And then I also talked to Paul Milliken with Fox 5 Atlanta, asked him to come and be a judge for the pageant. Mm -hmm. He already had a, and I asked him to stay over the next day and, and film live. But he already had a commitment, so he's going to try to work a day out while the fair's going on and come up there and broadcast awesome. live. Yeah. So bring all them awesome. people out of Atlanta up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and again, it's all about these mountains. Welcome to these mountains. Come and learn that we do love living here. And there's a reason. It's there amazing. is a reason. It's, it's amazing. Beautiful. Hilda, look at the time. Okay. It's time for us to get out of here. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed today, and I hope. <laughs> that you love my son. I love my son. I love your son. It's been a good day and in don't Georgia. Forget, don't forget the acoustic sunsets up at Hamilton Gardens. That's right. That starts back That's in right. August. Check out the website of Georgia Mountain Fair and, and yes. go more than once. You will become addicted to those mountains. We mm. hope you'll become addicted to those Absolutely. mountains. Absolutely. I'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all.